Tomorrow, the Supreme Court is set to conclude a blockbuster term and issue a landmark decision on whether presidents are granted a degree of immunity from criminal prosecution, a decision that could impact the 2024 race. We're joined now by CBS News Chief Legal Affairs Correspondent Jan Crawford and Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett. A lot to get to with both of you, but Jan, the big question of tomorrow morning, what will the court rule? Well, I mean, we'll see. But I mean, I do expect a decision that at least leaves open the possibility of a trial before the election. I mean, I see zero chance they're going to embrace Donald Trump's argument that he has absolute immunity and can't be prosecuted. I think they're going to say that there is some immunity uh, for the official actions of a president. Um, and why is that important? I agree, and, and you heard some of that in your conversation with Senator Vance. They are concerned that this case will apply to future presidents. They are concerned that after a bitter campaign, as one justice pointed out in argument, that the winning candidate could throw the loser into jail. They're worried about that. And as Trump said during that debate, he believes Biden was policies on immigration have been criminal. So they see this as a case that goes well beyond Donald Trump. That's why I think they're going to wall off those kind of official actions of a president, but leave open the possibility of prosecution for unofficial actions of an office seeker. And as Trump's lawyer argued at, at the oral arguments, conceded at the oral arguments, a lot of what's alleged in the indictment is unofficial acts. So Jack Smith could have those papers ready to go and say, he's conceded. This is unofficial acts that he can be prosecuted for. Let's get this trial going. And I think the judge could do that very quickly. It's hard to get your head around something being an unofficial act by the president when he is doing it in office at times from the Oval Office. A lower How court, do you explain that? Because uh, as a lower court in a different case on a similar issue explained, unofficial acts are the, off are the acts of an office seeker, a candidate, speeches you may give on the campaign trail at rallies. So a lower court has already laid out the groundwork for how you can make these divisions in the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. The official acts will be those core powers that presidents have, immigration policy, decisions you make about drone strikes. Those cannot be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. That is, that's going to be walled off. But there's a lot of things a president does that could be unofficial and criminal. There is so much we need to dig into on the legalities and then with you, Major, on the practicalities, yeah. because as you just mentioned, there could be a trial before the election. I, I, you we can't rule it out. We're going to have to talk about what that looks like and the impact on the trail. Uh, please stay with us and we'll have the rest of that conversation on the other side of this commercial break with Jan and Major. And we return now to our conversation with Chief Legal Correspondent Jan Crawford and Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett. Major, I want to pick up with you. Jan has laid out for us that there is the expectation the Supreme Court should, could say some, but not total immunity. What does this mean for the timeline for Special Counsel Jack Smith? As a practical matter, the Trump legal effort has already succeeded. It has delayed a resolution of this matter for a very long time. Oral arguments were April 25th. Many legal scholars have said, what is the court waiting for? This is not that hard a question. But by waiting, even if there is room available to special counsel Jack Smith to prosecute, his choice is to launch that trial in September or October at the absolute earliest, in the very teeth of a presidential campaign in which former President Trump says, because I am potent, because I am politically leading, I am being prosecuted. Is that the political and legal terrain Jack Smith wants to wade into? We'll find out. It's the most consequential prosecutorial decision in the history of the country, if and, it comes to that. And on two cases, on one two, directly right. related to 2020 and attempts to steal the election, right. the other unclassified documents, that playing out in Florida. Precisely. What is the timeline on that case? Much, much later. Uh, because Judge Eileen Cannon has briefed and heard arguments on so many underlying issues in that case, it does not appear ripe for a prosecution under the most favorable calendar before the election. The January 6th case, however, does. Jan, how would the immunity ruling that you are expecting um, affect the classified documents case in Florida? I don't think it would, because that, again, uh, that case is about what he did after he left office. And I agree with Major. I see no way that the classified documents case goes forward. Um, I think that is a very inexperienced judge. Uh, and she's taken on a lot of issues. So I see no way that one goes forward. Uh, because again, that's that's about behavior that after, you know, he's no longer a mm -hmm. sitting president. Um, but I, I do want to point out, 
I, you know, remember, the Supreme Court did agree to Jack Smith's request to expedite this case. He asked the court if they were going to decide it to take it up this term and have a decision by the end of the session. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's going to get. There are a lot of people who wish on the conservative side that the court had just said, no, we're going to just do it regular course of business. We'll come back and have arguments in October. We'll give a decision in December or January. And that means there is no trial. So the mm -hmm. court, and I, I, I understand there is frustration among Democrats that the court seems to be dragging their feet on this, but that's not true. I mean, the court has expedited this. They added this to their calendar, and they are going to give Jack Smith what he wanted in his filings, a decision by the end of the term well, there's that allows him to go forward with the trial. There's right. frustration among Democrats that the attorney general didn't move that's faster right. and bring either. charges. Uh, just right. a quick rejoinder on that point. A three-judge panel, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, issued a 57-page opinion on this that was unequivocal. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court could have taken that. Right. And, and that they didn't like that decision because it essentially said there is no immunity. It, you, there is none. And the court believed, and I think from this conversation you can see, there is some immunity yeah. uh, for official acts. And so the court believed, let's decide it now instead of having this go through the trial court process and come back up here challenging this. Trump would be challenging it in September, October all over again. Jan, Friday, uh, the attorney general said he was disappointed that the court ruled 6-3 to limit a law that has been used to charge hundreds of Capitol riot defendants as well as President Trump. How will this affect the potential case against Mr. That Trump? That case, again, you know, that came up, uh, one of the January 6th defendants, along with a couple others, who were charged with obstruction of an official proceeding, uh, challenged uh, the use of that charge in their cases, and the Supreme Court said on Friday that prosecutors may have overreached. They looked at the law that was at issue as part of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act after the Enron accounting scandal, and they said, the justices said on Friday, that it has to be tied to some kind of destruction or hampering of evidence. So that was a big win for the January 6th defendant in this case, Joe Fisher and a couple others, but it doesn't mean it's a big win for Donald Trump. He is going to file a motion to dismiss uh, assuming this immunity case goes like we believe it will, he'll file a motion to dismiss those charges against him. And Jack Smith, I'm sure, already has legal papers to say, let me show you how this obstruction charge is still going to apply to Donald Trump. And why is that important? That carries a 20-year prison sentence. Mm -hmm. It is a felony. It is the most serious charge. And I believe that based on, again, another uh, opinion in the D.C. Circuit that lays out a groundwork for how Trump can still be charged, yeah. they will be able to show that he was trying to interfere with evidence. The evidence of those certificates where they were counting yeah. state electors. He was trying to disrupt that evidence and the, the counting of those votes. And very quickly, Margaret, just under 1,500 people have been charged with the January mm -hmm. 6th riot. This affects less than 2% of those cases. Major, very quickly, yes. uh, for President Biden to mm -hmm. be removed from the top of the ticket, he would have to agree to he do that. He has to agree. DNC rules are absolutely clear on this. The threshold to be the nominee is 1,968 delegates. President Biden currently has 3,894. Unless he steps down, there is no mechanism to dislodge him from becoming the renominated candidate for the Democratic Party. Period. End of story. There are lots of people who are talking about it, but unless he removes himself or is somehow otherwise incapacitated, this is a closed matter. It's a family matter at the moment. A we very important family matter, not just the family, but the broader Democratic Party family. Thank you both for your reporting and your analysis.